Well, hey, Panther fans, welcome into Inside Franklin Panthers Sports. I'm George Young and pleased to be joined today by Franklin Athletic Director Blair King. Good to have you in studio today. Good to be here and thank you for having me. Well, Blair, you have been on the job a little over a year uh, as Athletic Director. You and Ryan Haley share those duties, uh, but you're no stranger to athletics. You've been around athletics dating back to when you were a kid, right? Tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, um, of course, you said I grew up playing sports, uh, very passionate about it, and I, my sport, sports were baseball and football. Loved football, and unfortunately, I suffered an injury where I couldn't play anymore, and that took that away. But that also opened up doors in education, something I never thought I'd be a part of. Um, my mother is a teacher, and I did not want any part of it. <laughs> and somehow, I got there and just been around sports. I've coached it. Uh, been in PE programs, health programs, been a school health coordinator, and it led to administration, which led to this job. And uh, I think I uh, started out in Maryville College and Tennessee Tech and Lincoln Memorial and got all the degrees to do what I do. And uh, that's about it. Uh, then uh, found Franklin, moved out here with my wife and kids, Ashley, Peyton, and Parker, and just been in love with it ever since. And how did you actually become athletic director? I'm sure there's a story there. It's kind of funny. <laughs> uh, when I moved here, it was Jay Brooks, your athletic director. Yeah. And guy, he did a great job. And you would never thought he was going anywhere. And someone came in my office and told me he's resigning. And I said, that's a joke, right? <laughs> um, and it, it, it was actually happening. And then I was asked by my principal if I'd like to add that to my duties. And I said, I'd absolutely love to do it, but I'm going to need help. Mm -hmm. And that's where, uh, and he agreed uh, with the other duties I have in the academic role. And I asked for Ryan Haley to come on board, and he has been just a blessing mm -hmm. to it. And it, we, together, we can do a lot of things that just one guy's not doing by himself. You are also assistant principal. That's what brought you mm -hmm. to Franklin. And now you uh, share those duties, the AD duties, with uh, Ryan Haley. Uh, Mention it at the top of the show here. Uh, I've been on the job a little over a year now. Uh, how would you assess that, uh, that first year? I'm sure it was uh, a learning experience. Uh, <laughs> it was a great learning experience. You really, you really didn't have a grasp of all the things Coach Brooks did in that role until you actually step in it, whether it's eligibility, making sure kids pass enough classes. that, uh, And then once you do that, you've got basketball, they're eligible part of the season, but once January hits, they may not be eligible after right. January. Tracking down their physicals, tracking down their paperwork, and luckily we found a program this year to help the coaches with that. It's an online registration system, but the coaches seem to be loving it. But And those are the things we're finding, listening to the coaches, what could help them, what could put more time back on their plate to where they're focusing more on coaching and teaching and not all the paperwork. And I think that would be a big success this year. And uh, just learning all this stuff and then dealing with problems that you have at games or issues with athletes and making sure your coaches are holding those accountable, all this stuff that you don't see on the field. Um, and it's very eye-opening, it's very, very busy. And uh, But I said at the awards bank, but there's no place I'd rather be than out there watching those kids play except for watching my, other, my own kids play. All right. Well, as the athletic director, I'm sure you view games a little differently and the coaches and the players a little differently. How do you, as an AD, gauge success? Gauge success, and you said get, watching the coaches. You, your fans may be watching the, the players, their mm -hmm. athletes. A lot of my focus is on the coach, um, seeing what is he, is he adjusting, is she, or he or she adjusting. Um, they start off 0-6. Is that... that that's bad, but uh, I'm also looking at what did he start with? What are his expectations for that season that we've already discussed before that happens? 0-6, um, but are they being competitive in those 0-6 games? Who are those 0-6 teams or those teams they've lost to? Our, uh, girls basketball last year would be a prime example. The very young, beginning of the year, were not winning, and then all of a sudden it clicks and they go in and just go through that tournament like a completely different team. And I can look at that coach and said, you coached, you turned them around. And uh, 
that's a lot of what I'm looking for is that growth and the player are, again, holding their players accountable academically and athletically. Uh, if I call a coach because a kid's been in my office for something even minor or major, and I tell you, what what are you doing after I tell you that? Um, to make And I tell the athletes, I'm going to hold you to a higher standard because you're wearing Franklin on that shirt. And uh, I want to know the coach is doing that, and, and our coaches do that. And I'm going to look at a coach, and just like my little boys in the other room, would I let my child play for that coach? And if that answer is no, then I've got a problem with that coach. But uh, majority, or all of our coaches that we have, I'd have no problem with my child playing for that coach. And that, that tells me a lot about the type of staff we have. Well, your role as AD is 24-7, and you're looking ahead. You're looking ahead to already basketball season, <laughs> even baseball and softball uh, in the spring. Uh, scheduling is a big part of looking ahead and making sure that uh, you can get all that worked out and doesn't conflict with other things happening at the school. Uh, do you handle a lot of that, or is it your coaches? It falls a lot on the coaches unless it's just something where they're either not comfortable or they don't want to, or they're messing it up, and we go in, and I, I'll take over if they really don't want to do it, but um, a lot of, you get a lot of issues with JV right now. There's no numbers. Uh, we have a girls JV soccer team, but they don't have anybody to play. They can't, everybody's dropping their JV because of the numbers, but um, trying to help that coach find avenues where we can pick up, and it may involve us driving a long distance, but uh, we let them schedule, and we, we have input on who we really don't want to host because of issues that come with it. But some of them, like your conference opponents, we can't control that. Um, but a lot of it, the coach is going to control, and I trust them to make the right decisions on that schedule and stay within the limited games they have. Fans that go out to your ball fields, whether it be the football stadium or the gymnasium or the fields there at Naked Middle School, uh, continually are seeing things done, if it's a new scoreboard or it's just mm -hmm. uh, landscaping. Infrastructure has a lot to do with money, um, but what is going on maybe that fans are going to see in the next couple of months to a year at the ball fields? There's some things going on, uh, and one thing you might not see is that last year we, you saw the soccer scoreboard that we had dedicated to Brandy Dill's mm -hmm. uh, daddy when he passed away. but. Um, and that, those things are more expensive than anybody can ever really realize. Mm -hmm. But, um, and we also were able through Coke to outfit our weight rooms, uh, brand new weight equipment. And once we get that done, we start looking for or towards other things. And the main thing on our list was one, the fit, we wanted the fields at making middle to look as good as that football field does and as good as the baseball field does. Um, and that takes a lot of work and getting that under one person who knows what they're doing. And a lot of money goes into that and a lot of upkeep. But then the other thing was uh, the girls' softball cage that the structure was built but is never finished. And that was knowing how successful they have been, that was a priority for us because they deserve to have that thing finished. And we luckily had a um, big part of it, we had to store field equipment in there. And that didn't go too well with turf and all that. Um, so you couldn't put it in there. And uh, Tectone stepped up and is purchasing, purchasing us a building to place all that equipment in to put on site out there. And then uh, Countryside Chevrolet helped us with one huge barrier, the cost of uh, insulating that cage, which you have to use a spray foam. And it was going to be very expensive in Countryside. Chevrolet stepped up and covered all that cost for us. And ecological insulations um, discounted that price very very good for us and it's moving along and we've got other people asking about what we need and hopefully we can get that thing framed um, turfed and uh, new nets put up and just make it a place where players want to be there and a big priority for that is when you look in the spring weather sharing that field and making middle sometimes there's just not enough time to get all your teams in and having that available especially last year with all the bad weather we had they uh they're able to have somewhere to practice, and once we get some heating and air in there, it uh, just be somewhere they actually they want to go, somewhere they're proud of. Right. right. Well, you touched on a little bit there with some of the fundraising. You've been blessed with some generous donations. Mm -hmm. uh, I know fans probably saw the cheerleaders and the football players selling those Panther cards. Mm -hmm. 
uh, as we began this year. Fundraising efforts continue, don't they? Yes, I think every board meeting, if you look at the minutes, you'll find where somebody's requested to raise funds. Um, we have everything where coaches are out there helping with the Booster Club doing 50-50 raffles. The Booster Club is very generous to let them keep whatever they raise from that. and they don't have, It used to be just kept with Booster Club. Mm -hmm. Um, and Booster Club themselves with signs and like the new soccer scoreboard, we need a sponsor for the bottom of that and that will bring in a good amount of money. And th those are all, I don't know if you'd call them sponsor or fundraisers, but they're sources of revenue for advertising. But uh, like softball for the finish their cage, they'll be doing an online fundraiser, which uh, hopefully set that off soon. Uh, volleyball did a great online fundraiser and they raised a ton of, they actually beat out football doing theirs. Um, their sales girls worked hard and things like cross country and you'll see it, they, they go take over a restaurant and they feed you and serve you and I think it was Jackson's. They allowed uh, our athletes to keep all the tips that came in and cross country has never brought in that amount of money. Um, and it was very good to see it and the kids were taking pride and working hard for it and they loved to see it. They feel great when the community gives back to them. and They know the community's taking an interest in them. Last question before we let you go. Uh, it's been circulating in the news uh, recently. Uh, some kids have been making waves transferring from public schools to private schools, specifically for athletics. How do you guys deal with that in the athletic department? Oh, um, you just, you move on and almost have that next man up philosophy and they, uh, the coaches are great about it, and it does it it does make you sometimes angry, especially when it's a bad uh, bad timing. But you hear the uh, the students they want to go for athletics or academics, which we all have our reasons, but I don't buy those reasons. Um, academics, uh, you're not going to find any better teachers than what we have in Macon County. Um, they uh, and the difference with those schools is they tout a lot of numbers, but they get to hand pick their athletes, and they get to hand pick their um, students. We have a student that doesn't have any help at home and maybe a discipline problem at school. We can't get, we can't just get rid of them. They can. You cause a problem there, you're gone. So of course everybody's going to four-year school because you're handpicking those students. And again, there's, uh, I wouldn't trade the education you can get at Macon County for anything. It's just as good as down the road. Um, and that the athlete, Athletic wise, there's no other coaches that I would have than what we've got right now. They take what this community gives them and turns them into more than anybody had expectations for. Football is a great example last year with all the talent that left mm -hmm. and what they were able to do. And they almost, almost knocked off Bandy. And that was with homegrown talent that they coached up and probably some of the best coaching I've seen since I've been here. Well, us here at FPSN, we have uh, been producing games for almost a year now, we launched it back in November officially as the Franklin Panthers Sports Network. And you've talked to me and I've heard from parents and even some of uh, kids that are playing uh, that they've gotten some exposure because of what we have done. And we kind of take pride in that. And I'm sure that you and, and the athletic department do as well. Yeah, um, I think I remember is last year you all started, uh, yeah. Ben Walker came to me and asked me about this idea, and I said, well, we'll try it, and never imagine it would be the type of quality it is. And when I talked to other ADs, they mentioned Backlot Cinema, FPSN, it's just first class, and you couldn't get better coverage or ask for it. And what people don't realize is uh, the Athletic Association makes you all pay to be able to broadcast. And so it's not like it's free, and it's not like you're making a lot of money off of it, but uh, the quality and the value to our athletes is under There's, I've got just tons of emails from college coaches where they love it to the point to where instead of just a highlight film, they get to sit and watch an athlete from their office compete in a full game. And something they, coming to Franklin in the mountains, that's hard for them to do. And especially they say, we're usually playing when you're playing. Say, if I can get on the bus and watch it on my phone, they said, that is a great value for me. And uh, then I can call over here and I need something on one player. And it's out there. And these college, these college coaches are saying, where are you getting this? It's fantastic. And uh, 
you've got players like Taylor Inslee and Mackenzie Rudity, who these coaches have watched, who are getting Division One offers. Um, last year, 21 players or 21 seniors out of 50 signed college scholarships, and a, a lot of them came through stuff where we're sending out these the coaches for them to watch, and the coaches I know we're following you all now watching. Well, we appreciate what uh, you do, Blair, with uh, the athletic department. You and uh, Ryan Haley and what you've done in your first year. And I know that you'll learn a lot more as uh, we go through this year. And it's already been an exciting uh, couple of weeks into the new year. Yes, sir. That's been Blair King, Athletic Director at Franklin High School. And thanks for joining us here on Inside Franklin Panther Sports. And thanks for watching us here on YouTube Live and Facebook Live.